Hello, welcome and welcome back to the Soul of Books podcast, a hangout place for all the book lovers out there. I hope you guys are having a great day and let's get started. It's literally the end of the year and today I'll be talking about some of my favorite books that I read in 2021. Book number one, The Prison Healer by Lynette Noni. Now this book is about a 17 year old girl named Kiva who has spent the last 10 years fighting for survival in the notorious death prison Zalindov. She works as a prison healer and when the rebel queen is brought into the prison, Kiva is charged with keeping the woman alive long enough for her to undergo the trial by ordeal. Now, if you're wondering what that is, it's a trial of air, fire, water and earth assigned to only the most dangerous of criminals. Kiva is aware that the trials will kill the rebel queen, so Kiva risks her own life to volunteer in her place. If she succeeds, both she and the queen will be granted their freedom. But you see, the thing is, no one has ever survived. The last part of this series is coming out in the mid-2022 and I'm so looking forward to it. As book number two, we have The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. But this book is about a 16-year-old girl named Avery who lives with her older sister and since their parents are gone, it's just the two of them and the money is tied to say at least. In a bolt out of the blue, Avery learns that she's inherited $46 billion from a Texas oil tycoon she's never ever heard of. She goes to Texas where she learns that in order to get the inheritance, she'll have to live in Tobias Hathorn's house for a year. Now, Hathorn's house is also occupied by the family that Tobias Hathorn just dispossessed. This includes the four Hathorn grandsons, dangerous, magnetic, brilliant boys who grew up with every expectation that one day they would inherit billions. Staying at the house might sound ideal, except she'll have to live there with Tobias' family who don't hide their resentment or favorite. But she's determined to find out why the money was left to her and Avery starts following clues and puzzles Tobias left behind. With her, every step of the way is Tobias' grandsons. Each one has a past. Each one has secrets and each one has a reason to want Avery dead. As book number three, we have The Raven Boys by Maggie Stevewater. Now in this book, one of the main protagonists is called Blue and she helps amplify the powers of those around her. On the night of St. Mark's Eve, when those who will die during the upcoming year file through a cemetery in an annual ceremony, Blue sees the ghost of a young man. Now she's not supposed to be seeing any ghost. Now this can only happen to a known seer if you are his true love or you kill him. The boy is called Gansey who attends the town's Osh boarding school. Having stayed away from boys for her whole life, Blue is drawn into the mysterious world of Gansey and his three best friends, Quiet Noah, Broken Ronin, and an ambitious scholarship kid named Adam. Everyone has their own secrets and is more than they seem. Blue and the Raven Boys help Gansey with his obsession with finding the final resting place of a medieval Welsh king. And the quest leads the five of them to make life-changing discoveries about the paranormal world. I'm pretty excited for book number four, which is Legend by Mary Lou. This one is a stylish, dystopian kind of thriller and personally, I loved it. We have two main characters, one is June and the other one is called Dig. June is born into an allied family and is a prodigy being groomed for success in the republic highest military circles. And the other one is born into the slums and is the country's most wanted criminal. But his motives may not be malicious as they seem. These two are from very different world and have no reason to cross paths until the day June's brother is murdered and Day becomes a prime suspect. Caught in the ultimate game of cat and mouse, 
Day is in a race for his family's survival, but June seeks to avenge his brother's death. Now, as the next book, we have The Guided Walls written by Roshini Chokshi. And let me tell you something if you are a fan of Six of Crows, this one is for you. In this book, we encounter Severin, whose birthright was stolen from him. Now, to reclaim his rightful place among the Francis elites, he must obtain the Babel Fragment for the Order. It is a heist that will require the skills of those with nothing to lose and everything to gain. Enric, a gifted historian and wordsmith. Sophia, a brilliant forging artist and engineer. Hypnos, a rival aristocrat who needs an ally among the Order. Tristan, an extraordinary forger and also Severin's brother. Lila, the mysterious dancer and the person who stole Severin's heart. Now as the heist goes on, Severin finds himself torn between his desire for revenge against all those who wronged him and the people he's deliberately placing in harm's way. Book number 6 is The Good Girl's Guide to Murder written by Holly Jackson. A high school senior, Andy Bell was murdered by her boyfriend, Sal Singh, who then killed himself. It was all anyone could talk about and five years later, Pip, our protagonist, sees how the tragedy still haunts her town. But she can't shake the feeling that there was more to what happened that day. She knew Sal when she was a child and he was always so kind to her. How could he possibly have been a killer? Now, as a senior herself, Pip decides to re-examine the closed case for her final project. But soon she discovers a trail of dark secrets that might actually prove Sal innocent and the line between past and present begins to blur. Someone in the town doesn't want Pip digging around for answers. This book is a must-read mystery full of twists and turns and with an ending you'll never expect. Book number 7, Sky, written by Neil Shusterman. A world with no hunger, no disease, no war and no misery. Humanity has conquered all those things and has even conquered death. Now, Skites are the only one who can end life, and they are commanded to do so in order to keep the size of the population under control. Citra and Rowan are chosen to apprentice to a Skite, a role that neither wants. These teens must master the art of taking life knowing that the consequence of failure could mean losing their own. Anyone who likes mysterious, thoughtful books, this is for you. I loved every single part of it and the plot sucks you in so much that it's impossible to put down. Now I can't end this podcast without mentioning some of my all-time favorite series, so bear with me. Six of Crows written by Lee Bardugo, The Cruel Prince series written by Holly Black, An Ember in the Ashes series by Sabah Tahir, The Red Queen series by Victoria Evior, and the Flawed series by Cecilia Ahun. I'm pretty excited to know your favorite picks of 2021 and what all books you are excited to read in 2022. Let me know in the comment section. If you like the podcast, drop a big thumbs up, subscribe or follow to be notified when I post new content. All right, that's it for the week. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.